Thank you so much to Bright Sellers for sponsoring this video. Imagine if Nikocado Avocado, the biggest crybaby on YouTube, was also a master murderer. Well, we're going to explore a character like that in today's movie review. <laughs> He's not as fat as Nikocado Avocado, but he shares some similarities. You'll see what I mean. Before we get too far into the video, I just want to let you guys know that I've been uploading a lot on my second channel, Elvis the Human. I try to find the strangest things on the internet and I make short bite-sized videos about them. The channel link will be in the description. Also, if you like what I'm wearing in this video, you can get them at AlienClothing.com, my personal clothing brand. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about Itchy the Killer. Ever since making my video on Martyrs, one of the most disturbing movies of all time, yeah. Dude, come on, we've already seen enough. I don't like this. <laughs> I've been getting an onslaught of recommendations for very brutal and disturbing movies. And one of them that I kept seeing pop up was Itchy the Killer. It just has like a ring to it. That's a really good name for a movie, right? I was really curious, like, what is this? I've never seen it before. So I sat my wife down because I'm very nice to her. <laughs> and we watched this movie together and I recorded our reaction to it. She wasn't very pleased. <laughs> It's gonna be a great movie. Don't worry, we love each other very much. If we didn't, I don't think she'd put up with this stuff. <laughs> the film has garnered controversy due to its graphic depictions of violence and cruelty and has been banned in several countries. The music in this movie reminds me a lot of the music in Fight Club. There's a lot of like strange futuristic like warping sounds with a basic drum beat in the back to give certain scenes a sense of intensity. <laughs> The movie is based off of a manga by Hideo Yamamoto of the same name. This movie was directed by Takashi Mika. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his last name. I'm just taking a stab at it. Huh? <laughs> This is the same man that directed 13 Assassins and other movies like Audition and Gozu. Itchy the Killer starts out with the first person perspective of a drug-fueled bender, as if you're in the head of some guy rushing down the streets of Japan, feverishly darting down random streets. It continues these strange fast forward moments as we're shown a conversation between some Yakuza. And then we waste no time and instantly go into some really heavy stuff. We get to watch a woman getting beaten. Yeah, it comes out of nowhere, it's... Oh my god. It catches you off guard, I'll just say that. And not only that, he takes advantage of her in a different way. Uh, it, the word rhymes with grape. So this guy is slapping around this woman. Meanwhile, a man watches from outside. We then find out that whoever was outside pleasured himself on the plants. His juices are falling off the plant. And then we see the title of the movie in his seed. Get it? Seed? Plants? <laughs> Wow, we have a close-up of the blue. <laughs> By the way, the guy that was getting off to this beating was Itchy the Killer. We're then shown his first crime scene. Blood from a dead Yakuza boss is everywhere. It's all over the ceiling, his guts are strewn about the floor. It's pretty gruesome. And honestly, it's way too much blood for one guy. But that's kind of an ongoing style choice in this movie. Copious amounts of blood, just everywhere. You know what I need after watching a movie like this? A nice glass of wine. So we got this box from Bright Cellars. Um, I'm expecting some very tasty wine. Bright Cellars matches you with wine from all over the world curated to your palate. They focus on finding unique hidden gems from small vineyards that you might not otherwise have known of. All you need to do is take their quick, simple seven question quiz so they can gather your taste preferences and deliver you wines that you're guaranteed to like. Ooh. <laughs> They send the wine directly to your door, so there's no need to venture out to a liquor store and waste money trying new bottles that might not even match your tastes. With Bright Cellars, you no longer need to choose a bottle based on the label alone. Each box comes with wine education cards for each bottle that outlines the tasting notes, suggested pairings, best serving temperature, and origin. <sighs> I'm so excited. So the first wine I'm going to be trying from our delivery is called Jumble Sale. Apparently it has notes of tangerine, peach, pear, and jasmine. Bright Cellars offers wines beyond your typical grocery store wine, including sustainable varieties and biodynamic wines. The packaging is completely sustainable, plastic-free, and has a small carbon footprint. Wow, I actually really like it. Really? <laughs> Yeah, it's awesome. Bright Sellers is giving my followers 50% off their first six bottle box. That's six bottles for just $53, which is a really great deal. Get 50% off your first six bottle box by clicking on the link at the top of the description. If you guys like wine, then there's really no other company better than Bright Sellers. Good job, Bright Sellers. Thank you so much to Bright Sellers for sponsoring this video. So please consider supporting them. Thanks. 
there are three main characters that I'll be regularly mentioning. Firstly, there's Itchy, a mentally disturbed killing machine and a huge crybaby. When you think of a master killer, you normally don't think of a crybaby, but Itchy is both. He cries whenever he's confronted with basically anything. He's kind of like innocent Boo from DBZ. What does Itchy use to kill people, you might ask? Well, you're definitely not gonna guess. <laughs> it's not a gun, it's not a sword. Instead, he uses boots. Yeah, they have like blades on the back and he just swings around his legs like a monkey man. <laughs> Then there's Kakihara. Basically, he's a JoJo's villain. He has platinum dyed blonde hair and he has scars all over his face. Remember the boss that was murdered earlier? Well, this guy is his sadomasochistic high ranking enforcer. And throughout the movie, he tries to find the person responsible for kidnapping the boss. Then there's Gigi or Jisan. He's the mastermind behind everything that takes place during the film. He's basically the invisible hand that controls Ichi. Throughout his life, he's manipulated him with false stories of his childhood. So he uses Ichi to take down the Yakuza and also steal all their money. So the Yakuza boss is murdered by Ichi and covered up. When Yakihara finds out about this, he tries to track him down. Gigi holds a meeting with Kakihara and tells him that he heard rumors that a different Yakuza named Suzuki might be responsible for the boss's disappearance. He's strategically turning the Yakuza against itself. Believing Gigi and these rumors, Kakihara has his men find Suzuki and bring him back to him. So Kakihara suspends Suzuki in midair with a bunch of meat hooks that are all hooked into his back. And he's like, hanging there. It looks painful. He then starts using sharp steel skewers and turns Suzuki's face into Swiss cheese. Kakihara is unable to get any information out of Suzuki, so he pours boiling hot oil on his back and then his head. When Suzuki's clan hears about this, it angers them and Kakihara's family has no more funds to appease them since Gigi stole everything. When they finally realize that Suzuki had nothing to do with it, as an apology, Kakihara cuts off the tip of his tongue and gives it to them. Remember, he doesn't mind doing this because he loves pain. We will explore that a little bit later in the movie. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's yeah. fucking gross. <laughs> Kakihara and other gang members capture Kano, not the same guy from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> He's a drug-addled member of the cleaning crew that was hired by Gigi. They were the guys that helped cover up the murder of the boss. Kano reveals that although he helped clean up the murder scene, it was Ichi who killed the boss, and that Kakihara has now been targeted. There's a scene where Kakihara tries to get information out of this woman, and in order to do so, he bends back all of her fingers, like all the way back. <laughs> it looks a little painful, like, oh my. Um... <laughs> So remember the beginning of the movie with the guy who was beating the woman? Later, Ichi returns to that guy's balcony and he watches as he brutalizes this prostitute whom Ichi is a regular patron of. Ichi had previously promised this woman that he would help kill this guy that's beating her. So a crying Ichi intervenes and he splits the pimp in two. The effects are terrible. <laughs> They're so bad that I'm pretty sure nope. I can show this on YouTube without getting demonetized. Ichi then tells the woman that he will now be the one to assault her. Yeah, so... <laughs> If you thought he was saving her, you're wrong. When she tries to defend herself, Itchy reflexively chops her neck, which then starts spraying like a busted water pipe. A lot of the times when people are injured in this movie, their blood will start spraying out of their body in a super unrealistic fashion, but it's still very entertaining. It's just like... <laughs> also, Itchy's costume is pretty hilarious. It's the same one from the manga. It's like this black Power Ranger suit and it has a big one on the back. If you didn't know, Itchy stands for one in Japanese. Welcome to Japanese 101. It gives this like goofy factor to this movie that's otherwise very serious and very fucked up. At Suzuki's prompting, Kakihara is kicked out of the syndicate, but the entire gang defects with him. Suzuki then promises Gigi a million yen to squash Kakihara. Gigi, it is revealed, is secretly orchestrating events in order to pit Yakuza clans against one another. Come to think of it, Ichi is also kind of like a JoJo villain. He wears a really goofy suit and he becomes homicidal and sexually aroused when enraged and he's normally unassuming and cowardly. It's such a strange mixture to put into one person. Then there's a scene where Kakihara is turned away by a Yakuza member. So he starts yanking on the man's cheek, trying to pull it off. Yeah, he grabs the guy's cheek and he starts trying to yank his skin off with his bare hands. <laughs> a woman named Karen enters. In this movie, she's kind of like playing all sides. She's friends with Kakihara. She's friends with Gigi. So then Karen, a woman that Kakihara is friends with, enters the room. The man knows her and screams for her help. Instead, she decides to join in and starts yanking on his other cheek. Oh my God, this scene is so insane. <laughs> they really went to town with the fake skin in this movie, didn't they? Itchy then starts to really lose it as if he wasn't psychopathic before. And Gigi is feeling like Itchy is starting to go down 
a dark path that he won't be able to pull him out of. So he slaps him to try and knock some sense into him. And the slap looks very real. Yo, why is he looking like that? What's up, little bud? One evening, Itchy runs into a bunch of boys, three bullies picking on one kid. So Itchy kicks one of the three bullies. He punts him like a football. <laughs> Karate kick this kid in the chest. And apparently the kid that he saved is the son of a Yakuza member, and that comes into play at the end of the movie. Uh, do we, do we want to just say spoilers, yeah, spoilers right off the bat? Spoilers. We're going to spoil this whole thing. Kakihara takes a liking to Karen and thinks she might be what he's been looking for ever since his boss was taken. His boss used to beat him all the time, and he really liked that. That's where his scars are from. He used to, like, get abused by his boss and tortured because he wants to be tortured. So he has Karen try and beat him in this room with a lot of hanging chains, but she can't hit him hard enough. So Kakihara leaves her. <laughs> he wasn't very pleased with the amount of pain that she could inflict. <laughs> He's like, hurt me harder. What the hell? What's wrong with you? Punch harder. Come on, woman. Later in the movie, Gigi incites Ichi to enter an apartment containing several members of Yakuza, and he has them slaughter them all. He basically tells Ichi that they're all bullies and Itchy doesn't like bullies because he has this false memory of these people that were bullying this woman. And when I say bully, I mean grape. They were giving, they were feeding her grapes in his memory. So yeah, when Itchy enters this room, it's absolutely ridiculous. Blood sprays from the open door and bodies fly out of it. Then someone's face splats on the wall and you watch as it slowly goes downward. And the aftermath is so gruesome. When Kakihara finds out about this, he walks through the room and there's like a hundred body parts strewn all around the room. Then there's a scene where Ichi confesses to Gigi that he hates killing people. So Gigi manipulates him into doing one last job to finish off Kakihara and his gang to get revenge for what happened to him when he was little. And then randomly in this scene, he gets a boner out of nowhere. I guess the thought of hurting people gives him a boner. It's hilarious. It like comes out of nowhere and he's surprised by it. He's like, oh, wow, my, my dick's hard. Why? <laughs> oh, God, his dick's hard. Kakihara then enlists the help of corrupt twin police detectives to find a prostitute connected with a guy that's part of Gigi's gang because they finally connected the dots and they know they have to find Gigi. When they find this prostitute, they cut her nipples off. Yeah, it's really gruesome. I didn't like this part. <laughs> And they don't just cut them off. It's the way they cut them off. They like put them in clamps and pull them out super far and then use a razor blade and just kind of like swipe mm. across. Ooh. Ah. Oh, Jesus. What the heck? Ah. Just dropped her nips off. Wow. That would suck. <laughs> When the corrupt police detectives fail to get information from her, one of the twins tracks down the guy they're trying to find by literally putting on dog ears and sniffing him out. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> This is so weird. He does outrun the twin, but Kakihara captures him instead. And when they confront each other, Kakihara unlocks his jaw like a snake. And when this guy tries to punch him, he bites his hand. And when he pulls his fist away, you can see that all the skin was pulled off of his hand. It's really brutal, but the effects on Kakihara are pretty bad, so... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What? <laughs> I guess Kakihara is like the male version of Melina from Mortal Kombat. Meanwhile, Gigi has Karen seduce Ichi by pretending to be the woman that was fed grapes in Ichi's false memory in order to try and make Ichi more compliant because at this point in the movie, he's actively trying to fight against Gigi's manipulations and he's tired of killing people. So Gigi is trying to use Karen to get Itchy back on track. So Karen starts licking Itchy's lollipop, if you know what I'm saying. And Itchy seems very upset by this. That is, until he thinks of brutalizing her, then his facial expression changes to excitement. He thinks that she wants to be brutalized. He's under the impression that she uses reverse psychology, you know? She says she doesn't want it when she really does want it. And she becomes confused by Karen's claims that she desired for him to uh, feed her grapes and assault her. And then when he starts becoming hostile, she fears for her life and tries to tell him that it was all set up. Don't touch my look at me, look at me. But he thinks that she's putting on a show for him. So he ends up killing her. Gigi informs Kakihara that Ichi is coming to kill him, but then he's spotted by one of Kakihara's henchmen. After a pursuit, Gigi undresses and shows off his huge muscles, dude. Like, what? What the hell? He's like randomly super beefy. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's a truck. Oh. <laughs> what? He's just ripped. <laughs> 
How is he so muscular? I was not expecting that. <laughs> that's so funny. He just walks over and snaps the guy's neck, and that's it. Then we get a scene of one of the twins. He's torturing one of the guy in Gigi's gang, and he's very curious if it's possible to rip someone's arm off with your bare hands. So he tries it on him and succeeds. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's such an unnecessarily random and gruesome scene. But then again, that's like basically this entire movie, so. Ichi then arrives at Kakihara's base, where he ends up killing both of the twins. So then Kakihara and Ichi chase each other to a rooftop. Due to Gigi's psychological manipulation, Ichi believes that one of Kakihara's henchmen is his brother and confronts him. This guy's name is Kaneko. Kaneko then shoots Ichi's leg, and Ichi slits Kaneko's throat in front of Takeshi, his son. The same kid that Ichi saved from being bullied earlier in the movie. Ichi he then collapses into a puddle of his own tears. Kakihara watches on in absolute confusion. <laughs> Big cry, baby. The kid then attacks Ichi as he lies on the floor crying. Kakihara doesn't know what to make of all this. He finally confronts this killing machine. Prior to meeting him, Kakihara was scared but also extremely excited that he would finally be able to find someone that could inflict the kind of pain that he wanted. But the last thing he was expecting was to find a huge crybaby. <laughs> Believing Ichi is too unstable to hurt him, Kakihara inserts his skewers into his own ears to drown out Ichi's cries. He suddenly sees that Ichi has decapitated the kid. Ichi then charges Kakihara, embedding one of his bladed boots into his forehead. Kakihara falls from the roof to his death. However, when Gigi finds him, Kakihara has no wound in his head. He hallucinated this entire thing and almost fantasized about Takeshi's murder and Ichi's attack, when in reality, he just jumped to his death while Ichi cried. Years later, Gigi's corpse is seen hanging from a tree in a park. A young man resembling an older version of the kid from earlier leaves the park with a group of school children. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is Itchy the Killer. Definitely a crazy movie. Lots of people were fed grapes. There was a lot of blood and a lot of hurting people. If all this stuff is accurate to the manga, it must be a pretty extreme manga. I can't imagine being like a child and reading this manga because holy shit, God forgive me. Please forgive me for watching this movie. <laughs> I'm not even religious, but even I think that, that I, I've kind of committed a sin by watching this. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Head over to AlienClone.com if you haven't already and check out all the awesome designs we have over there. Don't forget to check out my second channel, Elvis the Human, and another channel of mine, Alien Bacon, where Bionic Pig and I, we laugh about certain stuff all over the internet. It's a really fun channel. So if you're looking for extra content, you can go there. All the links will be in the description box below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye.